you're listening to the first episode of the Hewins Theory Podcast. I'm your host, Ian, and my guest for today is a former beauty queen, entrepreneur, and media personality, Casey Finnell Shirley. Welcome to the podcast, Casey. Hi. How are you, Casey? I am good. How are you doing? I am fantastic. Thank you for coming on to the podcast. Of course. Of course. I'm happy to be here. Congratulations on this new step, this new journey. Thank you so much. (laughs) (laughs) But really, Casey, how are you amidst this COVID? Oh, gosh. I mean, what? It's been since March we've been in this or Mm -hmm. late February. I can't even, I can't remember exactly, but boy, the motions, (laughs) the motions, you know, you you have super high days and then you have some low ones. You you want to know what to expect. You really can't, trust me, but it's been a journey. Mm -hmm. Just been more at peace with myself, actually, Mm -hmm. um, which is astounding because life sometimes can get in the way of you actually creating that boundary with you so i'm grateful for that aspect other aspects business wise you know it really slowed things down right right as we all know no yeah majority of us know so i mean especially for me too with the Mm -hmm. hospitality industry you know that was shut down completely oh gosh so i can tell you about (laughs) shutdown Mm. and covid and covid um, but yeah, you mentioned about boundaries. Mm-hmm. How do you strike that balance with everything that's going on, you know, around you? Mm. Honestly, it's one of the most difficult things for me, but it's also one of the most important things for me. Mm-hmm. So if I feel like I'm not striking that balance between my life, my business life, you know, um, my personal life, my public right. life, I feel out of whack. Mm-hmm. Like I feel... Like, I can't operate. That's how bad it is. So, um, I try to ensure that I always keep a piece of me to just myself. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like that's the only way to keep sane as a public figure. Because, you know, I... I'm so big on privacy. Right. I'm not trying to keep any secrets from anybody, but I'm so big on privacy. You know, if it's a moment at home, I don't feel like I need to be constantly videoing this or vlogging this. Hence the difficulty with me and YouTube, YouTube. trying to Which find I a just, balance. I just about to talk Which, about YouTube. Oh my goodness. It was right. such a, you know, it was one of those things where it was a leap of faith. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And I rather regret something mm-hmm. I did and failed. <laughs> Than, than not do it, do it and wonder I, I and, agree. and sleep at night and be like, if I never do this, how would I go? Da, 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 da. Um, and it's not to say that it's a failure. It's just, I know I could have done more. Right. I know I can do more. And there's nothing wrong with that. So there was no balance with that for Correct. me. <laughs> right. So mm-hmm. that was a huge problem. I was just like, you're not getting it together. Move on. You know, you know, my thing too, is that a lot of people, especially when you're in the public space, they have so many demands mm. and they, they forget that you're human. Mm, right. Mm, mm. And in the space of YouTube and content creators, mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot of work. It's it not is. a nine to five job that you do. And then you go home five o'clock and yeah. then you have the rest of the time for yourself. And yeah. then at the end of two weeks, you get a paycheck. And then That's you have to think works. about the boundaries that you're setting there as well, because your home life is also important, Correct. right? Even if it's just by yourself, if you mm-hmm. live by yourself, if you have your partner or you're just living at home still with mom, dad, whoever, you still have to be able to set boundaries. Nine to five is a boundary. It is a boundary. It is a boundary. And you stipulate the fact that I'm working between these hours. Correct. When you are on your own, you kind of don't have mm-hmm. those boundaries nope, set for yourself because you're just like anytime, any place, anywhere, however oh, it's going to happen, it's it going to happen. Right. And I feel like that's a lot of chaos, if you ask me. So if it is that you want to step into a space like podcasting, correct. If you want to do YouTube, whatever it may be, media wise, you be, you have to be able to be strict with yourself and say, "This is what I'm going to do, so I can reserve a piece of me to enjoy home." Right. And especially with a lot of persons now working at home, mm-hmm. you 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 feel like you're not home. No, you do, you you really don't feel like you're home. I was working mm-hmm. from home at one point um, when everything was shut down. Right. But, you know, emails, mm-hmm. etc. And it didn't feel like it didn't feel. Okay, so I was I was saying mm, I'm home, so I'm more relaxed. And right. Nobody doesn't. It, it it's not productive. It right. don't make no sense. Right. And then that you end up now have to create a space in your home mm. that now becomes your workstation, which mm. just becomes. Your safe haven is now <laughs> flooded with all your business. Flooded with all my business, yeah. all the calls, all the emails, mm. and it's just really crazy. Yeah. But then, as you said, boundaries are important because you need to know when to stop and when this doesn't. Is this is not making me happy anymore? Right. 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 Um, so we talk about the YouTube. Mm-hmm. Where are you with YouTube? 
YouTube and me, we ha- we are not compatible. You see how me and you compatible? <laughs> right. Me and YouTube, we're trying to figure out our compatibility. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something that I'm not giving up on. I know the errors I need to work on. I have so much content and things that I want to do. And, and I'm ideas. so particular. And, mm-hmm. I'm so particular. <laughs> that if it is not going to be like this, I don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. And that was also why it took me so long to... To actually launch YouTube because I had my particular idea. It wasn't coming to life. But I said, I had to sit down with myself and say, Casey, if by January X it not come true, you still got to put out something. something. And so said, so done. And that's what I did. And then things were coming into play beautifully mm-hmm. for YouTube. Where I was going to be able to actually map out my content. content. Have everything set, set and up. ready. Mm-hmm. And then boom, COVID. On the stand, yeah. <laughs> Mask up, sanitize. When not going anywhere, yeah. everything <laughs> locked down. Mm-hmm. You know, six feet apart. Da, 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 da. You know, the new normal came into play, and I was just like, whoa. And then I was one of those. I was like, by summer, mm-hmm. we're gonna figure things out. Summer came, and I'm just like, mm, what's happening? <laughs> I'm not trying to downplay this, you know, mm-hmm. because I'm just like, I'm doing my part. I wish everybody else would do their part. We need to social distance, mask up. If we don't need to be outside, we don't need to be outside. But man, how difficult. And, you know, and that's okay. Yeah. It, it is okay. And, you know, for me, it's the opposite where COVID happened, right? And I'm like now thinking, what can I do? Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, podcast. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. I've been wanting to do this for two years now. Mm. I just never came together. I'm right. like, you know what? Let me start. I have no excuse to start. Right. So I put out that trailer. I got a, got a lot of feedback. Nice. A lot of good feedback. And I said, okay, let's just start it. And mm. then here we are. And that's beautiful. But, you know, this period has definitely meant... So many different things for so many, many different people. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. So I would not, I, I wouldn't find it my place to judge anybody about how they're trying to go through mm-hmm. this whole process because it's hard. It is hard. It is so difficult. And um, initially, what used to get me through, it was just like, me and my friends were just like, we're going to start working out in the mornings virtually. Mm-hmm. We don't have no trade or no nothing. Because I was speaking to a friend of mine. I was like, boy, this whole period really is just making me feel down. And I mm-hmm. feel like everybody else is feeling this way. And I was like, I don't know what to say yet. She said, tomorrow morning we're starting to work out. Get ready. Right. I said, what? She said, yeah. And also it's at five o'clock. I said, no, no. ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. She's like, all right, six, 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 six. I said, all right, we can work it there. And it was just a group of us. And that's how I started to feel sane again mm-hmm. that's good. <laughs> working out that's right good. Mm-hmm. i come in a love workout me however <laughs> however <laughs> i love the results what? of it and i love to be able to hang with my friends right. so this was an escape mm-hmm. you know it was a moment where i was so grateful for it and even if it was just an hour it was something that brought us even closer together right so i'm grateful for those that's moments. good i mean listen me and exercise is not the <laughs> best friend. like nobody <laughs> no, i mean i love my friends and yeah yeah they're, yeah. they're very active in the gym mm. And trust me, for me, you don't find me in the gym. Mm. You don't find me working out. I understand. I used to walk in the mornings with my dog, mm-hmm. but then that was just it. But then, mm-mm. but what COVID did for me though, mm-hmm. it taught me how to cook. Mm. I don't know how to cook. What? Honestly, I don't know how to cook. I love that. Because you know me <laughs> love to cook. I'm in love, you love to eat. Yeah. So I love that you learn how to cook. I love my belly. Yes. I love food. Yes. I get very excited for food. Yes. But I can't cook. Oh my God. No, you so have to So I learn yourself. how to dish up a few stuff. What I do your... breakfast items. and. So what know. has it been your favorite thing you make now? Mm, I mean, I really love a good tuna omelette. Mm-hmm. With like an extra cheese. That is nice. Okay, cool. That's not bad. And I love tacos. Mm. I'm a big fan of tacos. Me too, boy. I love tacos. I love I love a good taco. Me too, same. Some extra cheese. Yes, and, like and sour cream and all the salsa. Like it's delicious. Salt, babe. Yeah, salt, <laughs> salt babe. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Really um, so, yeah. So, you think that you're going to step away from YouTube? You think, um, you... I actually don't know mm-hmm. where I am with that yet. And I'm comfortable with that. Mm. <laughs> um, I'm at peace with the fact that... If I don't know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, if you see me upload something tomorrow, I'm going to. And it's not to, 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 you know, push it to the side. It's just that I'm going to try, but I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Mm-hmm. If I feel like I'm not in it, then it's not going to reap the rewards I expect. Right. And it's quite, energy is obvious. Mm-hmm. You know, people read that energy, people feel that energy. And if I don't feel comfortably myself mm-hmm. doing this, then I will stop. I haven't gotten there. Yes. So I'm not, and I'm hoping maybe not, not. to reach mm-hmm. there. But the whole idea is to keep trying and see where it takes me. And I have marked my date to mm-hmm. be like, okay, 
if by X time we're not seeing what you want or you're not, you know, ticking off these goals, then we'll look at something else. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. And I do have uh, um, other things in mind because this whole cooking aspect. Right. I absolutely love it. Which we're going to jump right, right into. Right into fan mm-hmm. made. Because when you talk about food, you know. Yeah, I family. love food. Food. Sis. I love food. <laughs> when you I love talk to about eat. food. Oh. <laughs> Man, food is life. Food is love. I wake up every day thinking about what I'm going to eat for the day, what mm. I'm going to make for dinner. And, you know, that has always been my therapy session. In the kitchen, mm-hmm. oh, I'm zoned out. I just feel light. I feel at home, you know. And that brought the whole idea of fan made. So mm-hmm. Karen Clark, she's my manager. Right. I love Karen. I love Karen, too. She's the best. Um, I gifted her my pepper jelly one time because she loves pepper she loves spice so it's like Listen, actually when i messaged her when yeah. i messaged her about the, the jelly she was like what you have to try this one <laughs> this was, and you see the exclamation signs that you yes. said no like she's excited okay <laughs> so like, this is a point where i'm not making it to sell or anything i just you know for whoever loves it in mm-hmm. my family my friends so i used to give it to them whatever she's like i gave it to her the next day she's like so where do i buy it and i was just like Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, this is just out of love, you know. I This is my pa- little passion thing that mm-hmm. I'm going on. She's like, sis, no, you need to get to it. This needs to be on shelves. It's so good. And she's like, I'm not being biased. This mm-hmm. is at a point where I didn't even get to really know who Karen Clark was, was yet. yet. So I know she was giving an unbiased opinion. Yeah. And if mm-hmm. anybody knows Karen Clark, she's unfiltered. And uh, rightly <laughs> so. Let me tell rightly you. so. Let me tell you. Which I appreciate about of her course. because you have a lot of persons that just want to BS. You right. know what of I mean? Course, it's it's ridiculous. Course. So she's like, you need to get this going right mm-hmm. now. And Agreed. she's the one that helped me catapult that. Right. Uh, so that's Sorry, I get so excited because I just can't wait to try mine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I have... Uh, I have two products mm-hmm. right now which is my scorching scotchy which is a hot sauce mm-hmm. and then i also have my sweet heat pepper jelly mm-hmm. which i love and I, that's my baby right there because it's sarling fused it's not just the average pepper jelly and i love pepper love mm-hmm. pepper me too so hence why a lot of my products is pepper pepper pepper, pepper. Mm-hmm. and i'm launching two new products mm-hmm. this week which i'm super excited about um one is being i'm going to give you the load on i haven't even spoken to anybody about this oh, yet wow. so oh. i'll give it to you all right um, because <laughs> by the time this comes out it should be on shelves mm-hmm. um it's another flavor of my pepper jelly which is now going to be mint it's made with jamaican mint so Ooh. it's sweet heat mint pepper jelly which is phenomenal and me no love mint me too i'm not I'm a big not, fan of mint i love my mint tea, tea yep yeah, but not mint. not eating it <laughs> not, no, no not mint. so in the test kitchen i literally was just slathering it mm-hmm. on everything seeing how i feel about it and i was like Am I really liking something that's mint? And it's not me because I made it myself. Mm-hmm. Because I'm honest enough to know, be like, listen, I've made some things and I'm, it's questionable. questionable. <laughs> right? Yes. That's why it's a test kitchen. Test, correct. So I feel confident about it. And then my next product is a spicy pickle. Sp- oh, uh, okay. So you I don't love a, pickle. No, no, no. Mm-mm. I uh, love a pickle. No, no, no. Mm-mm. Olives? I know. What? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. I love, so for me and like for my burgers, mm-hmm. Do never do, don't even no don't even try it what and, and I don't even like cucumbers either oh I don't, so you see where the two come cucumber pickle I'm mm. not a fan olives so, no I, I <laughs> mustard <love> no <laughs> but I love a good burger okay. with pickles and mustard oh no 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 <laughs> it can't <laughs> I've got social distance right now because that <laughs> man, a pickle thing. I don't even like the smell of a pickle. Oh my god! Even the pickle juice, I love it. Mm. <laughs> god. <laughs> I'm Sorry, just kidding. I'm not gonna drink it. I love smell, but I love um, I love pickles, and I I made the so I have those two coming up. It's a spicy thyme pickle, and then have my sweet heat mint pepper jelly coming out. So I have good. I mean, yeah, it's nerve wracking because yeah. it's something new, mm-hmm. and when you put out something, you're just like, oh. I'm always in my bed. I'm like. Oh, I hope they love it. I hope they love it. I hope they love it. But I'm always welcoming any constructive criticism, criticism. along the way. Right. Yeah. Do you ever, for a second, thought that you would jump into entrepreneurship or business? No. No. Not even for one moment did I think that I was ever going to be in this space that right. I'm in. Because, right you know, you did, we saw you, you entered the scene in the pageant world. Right. And we love you for that, yeah, of course. Yes. Um, but that's that's gone. Yeah, long that's, gone. That's, that's six years gone. later, six. We're over that. We're over that. Yeah. And you've you've 
grown so much mm-hmm. and I and I really love how down to earth you are mm-hmm. and you're you just have a vibe. Oh, thank you. And you then you stepped into the sauce business mm-hmm. Ben made. Yes. Which Karen Clark inspired. Right. Uh, rightfully so. Right. And then you tapped into Casey's Boss Beauty. Right. That's our con- carnival concierge. Talk about that. You get so no, excited listen, to talk about I it. I do. Listen, when you look at me, you know, you think I love fashion. Mm-hmm. I love food and I love carnival. Mm-hmm. Those three things are what makes me, me. Now, carnival is another idea that me and Miss Karen came with together. She's like, you love carnival, but <laughs> how we can make money from money that? And I was like, you're right. <laughs> let's, you know, let's Boss. brainstorm this. Let's brainstorm this. She's like, yeah, you love it. But mm-hmm. no, we need to be able to make money from this. And the whole idea of carnival, the case is Boss Beauty, came into play that Carnival has evolved so quickly over the years, mm-hmm. right? Back in my parents' days, because my dad is a car- soca junkie. So he is. Yes. Crazy. Not my, my, my mom. She's and you not would a think fan. that your mom, right? It's the opposite. It's my the opposite. dad is a soca junkie. My mom is just like, eh, here or there. He used to jump <laughs> and she used to, she used <laughs> to be on the crazy. sidelines. She's like, hey. That's crazy. <laughs> but um, back in those times, people never really got dolled up or anything. It right. was just about putting on your costume, costume your, and your crepe and your outer road. Correct. Right? Enjoying yourself. Now it's a whole beauty crazed it's a lifestyle it's it? a lifestyle like it has unfolded to so much more makeup mm-hmm. your makeup needs to be on point. point you need to have your boots you need to ensure you have your stockings the hair your hair <laughs> everything comes into play now and you're just like hmm so the whole idea of cases boss beauty was for us to take care of all of that for you for you mm. to just show up Bring your costume and we'll take care of the rest. Your hair is done. Your breakfast is ready. Mm-hmm. You're being attended to around the clock. clock. And you're still... The you're, whole hospitality. The whole hospitality. Exactly. And trust me, I can tell you about the hospitality. Oh, exactly. Oh, great. And, and to see that is just such... It's so clever. Mm. It's so clever. Because a lot of girls, it's so hard for them to... Even guys too. Mm-hmm. Who, you know, who really take this carnival mm. I love carnival, but I'm not that... I don't think I am... Uh, Oh, I'm not that kind of a baby mm, as you know, as mm-hmm, you probably. Mm-hmm. But I love the music and I love to jump and, right. I love, and I'll go with my friends. Right. But my friends, they are they go all over kind of all just mm-hmm. these up the hair, the makeup. But it's always such such um a disaster really to get everything together. <laughs> if I must say, like it is that person to do your makeup, it that person. Is. But you have like a one stop shop mm-hmm. to get that. Everything done. is done right there for you. So we handle everything. We even carry you to wherever your band is at that moment that oh, really? you're ready. Yes. There's a shot that brings you... Yes, honey. We, when we said we were going to do this, we're going to do this properly and we're going <laughs> to do this right. And it was such a fantastic time. Mm-hmm. So initially, it was just an invite basis where I did it with just my friends just to see how it would go. Cool. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. So we said, next year we're doing it again. We right. did it next... It was phenomenal again. So mm-hmm. we're, it's something that we're very proud of. Right. And, you know, I'm proud of the fact that I've gotten, you know, Miss Karen into soca music. music. She loves our soca music <laughs> <That's> now. <good. laughs> but it has all been a learning process and that's another tap in where I have learned the business side of things and right. not necessarily just enjoying something. Correct. Because Carnival is not about the wine up and all of that for mm-hmm. me. It's about the freedom and just the happiness and joy that it fills me with. Mm-hmm. And those light moments are very hard to find sometimes. It is. So for no, me to be me. able to identify that moment, mm-hmm. that's why I go to Trinidad. And just bask in that moment. Oh, bask and enjoy. in that moment. And, and just here, lock out all the noise mm. outside. Just even all if the it's for a couple hours, couple I'm taking hours. it. I, trust me, memories, those memories mm. last forever. The best. Um, so we're going to jump back. You talk about learning the business side of mm-hmm. everything. And a lot of people don't realize how serious you are with your business. Oh, yeah. And they just see that facade outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It, and it, then they judge. Right. Because that's what people do. Yeah. Talk about the business side, what you've learned in all of this entrepreneurship side. Because you said you, you, you never once thought you yeah. would go to that space. Right. But now you're here. Right. And what, what have you learned? Well... Being an entrepreneur, you're a head cook and baka washer, mm-hmm. right? Um, you have to ensure that you have every single thing in place. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you get paid because you handle all of that. Stuff. Sometimes you don't get paid. Right. You have to be able to invest and believe in your product to the point that you're willing to take the risks. Believing in your product. Believing in your product or your serv- service, whatever it is, you have to be able to be passionate about it. If you're not passionate about it, it will go nowhere. If you if you don't 
if you're not passionate about mm. what you're putting your foot on, mm. then it's just not going to work. But no guess not how, that can't guess up. That no matter how mm-hmm. much money you spend to get a mm-hmm. PR or a manager or whatever the case, mm-hmm. if you personally is not passionate it's about not it, it's not going anywhere. Period. It's not going anywhere. And it's um this year it really I know we talk about 2020 pivoting and da da da. We're tired of hearing all of this. But seriously, it really made me take a page out and be like, get serious. Mm. I dropped my samples off to multiple locations, so which got me into six more locations. So I'm just Ooh. like, hey, Ooh. this is business. <laughs> you know, it's about being, yeah, what is pride? What is ego? Mm-hmm. Lock that away. Lock that away. Because you want to ensure that you have this space now, mm-hmm. right? You need to show persons that you're serious. Mm-hmm. There's people that love my product, right? Right. I need to show them that I'm about this. Correct. So that I can have them be loyal to my brand. Brand. Correct. Right? Right. Not just for now, but throughout the years to come. Because I'm hoping that this will grow to the level that I'll have my family a part of it. Part of it. Right. Of course. So I would say the biggest lesson is to just keep your foot on the gas. Because there are days where it really is challenging and it really is demotivating. Mm -hmm. Where you question your yourself and you know the space you're in and the product that you're trying to do you think it's fabulous but somebody's ex said it's not Not. and you have to dial back and realize you're not trying to get everybody's approval here correct you know being being in this (laughs) industry especially as it relates to food everybody else has a different taste bud and a different appreciation for different things so i had to be able to understand that and be like just because john said it not spicy enough don't mean saying all right so in your test kitchen when you're doing this you believe in your product Mm -hmm. when i'm testing i literally give out samples to persons that i know will give me their unbiased opinion correct and i will take it from there because Because you don't want to fall in love with your product that's what i was just about to say you don't want want to to get too complacent okay like oh everybody's opinion is like no i know this shit is good right right sometimes sometimes you have to dial back Mm -hmm. and you have to listen because constructive criticism is out there and it's good absolutely that's how you grow Mm -hmm. and and then you and then the other side you have the criticism where persons just want to be rude rude correct whatever yeah and balancing and knowing Mm -hmm. those two is all is such a important lesson oh absolutely absolutely so i'm grateful for the lessons that this has that has this has taught me Mm -hmm. and is teaching me because a big part of this is that i want to continue learning i don't want to ever feel like i have reached the pinnacle i want to continue to learn so that i'm ever evolving Mm -hmm. i don't want to ever be in the position where i feel like you know everything is plateaued Mm -hmm. right because it's always important for you to keep climbing up climbing up climbing up and when you're at the peak Right. You start next one. Next one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's never ever to stop or feel like you've reached. Reached. Because yeah. that's when the problems arise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how does you talk about giving out samples to like friends and mm-hmm. family members and when the business actually starts mm-hmm. and you start learning about people. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about people. Well, people <laughs> is something I have been um I've been aware of the people around me for a very long time, way before even offering my product, just being overly critical of myself. So, mm-hmm. so you enter in this, you're already aware that you're going to hear some stuff that mm-hmm. you may not necessarily love in return. However, I bank on myself being humble. Mm-hmm. I bank on myself being open to hearing a person's out. I'm never going to be the one to shut anybody down or out, no matter what you say to me. Mm-hmm. That doesn't, make, doesn't mean that I'm a coward or anything. Correct. I just choose my battles. I agreed. Because I am looking at the long run. I'm not looking at the short moments right here. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not saying I don't have moments where I'm at home and I say, like, <laughs> why did this just happen? Why did they say this? How did this go? Da, 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 da. But that's a moment. Mm-hmm. Just a moment. Just a moment, yeah. I'm looking at how I can rectify the situation and move on. A word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't sit and stew in that because then that becomes you. Mm-hmm. And I'm so keen on the thoughts, my thoughts, mm-hmm. because this is my home. This is my vessel. The thoughts that we stew and bring up sometimes become what we live in. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be in that negative state and bring on the anxiety and other things that we don't necessarily Depression. want. Oh, mm-hmm. gosh, all that stuff. And I know sometimes it feels out of our control, but mm-hmm. I try to control what I can in those moments. Mm-hmm. Being kind. That oh. kindness goes, you're not, so it's, far. it's so and it's, far. It's, it's not much. It's not. It isn't. And I'm not being kind to 
gain something. Gain anything. Correct. I'm being kind because it's who I am. It's human. It's human. I'm human. And and like you said earlier, a lot of persons that are in the public space don't get that reception like they are human. Right. But I guarantee that problems that anybody else that isn't in the public eye goes mm-hmm. through, we go through too. Of course. You know? When we're sitting at a restaurant and we're eating, we don't necessarily want somebody up in our face and be like, can all I take a picture? And I'm like, mm, um, <laughs> fuck, um, um, um. no, I don't love that at all. But I'm grateful for people mm-hmm. because people are who got me here. Right. And I would never ever be that person that says, "Oh, this is too much." And da, da, da. But I will never ever be able to box the hand that fed me or feeds me. I agree, and and it just goes back to like your your branding. Mm-hmm. It branding is important. Oh, absolutely. You as a person, what you put out there is important. Mm-hmm. Your social media is mm-hmm. important. Like you, people don't understand how much. Like never burn your bridges. No. Nope. Never burn your bridges, no matter where you get in no, life. No, be no, humble. No, no. Oh yes. Be grateful and be thankful. Right. And just understand that whatever makes you happy, do it. Oh, absolutely. And it's just it's just a powerful thing when you can right. find that in yourself. Mm-hmm. It's so much better. Things so flow true. so much easier. So true. And you know, a lot of persons have this perception or assumption that's a bond with a gold spoon in my mouth mm. and far from i've worked so hard to get to where i am today mm. and i'm not saying i'm at the peak i really am far from the peak, peak. Mm-hmm. however i am working hard i'm not saying that there hasn't been privileges especially as being a former beauty queen mm-hmm. there are privileges right. however People don't see the grit or the grime. They just see the end success. And that's exactly and exactly why I, I do this podcast. Mm-hmm. This is exactly why I do it because people just see what the end product. Right. They see the crown, mm-hmm. the sash, the, the, the advertisements, mm-hmm. the gigs, the brand ambassadors, right. all those all those other things. They see Fen made when mm-hmm. it comes out in on the supermarket shelf mm-hmm. in a beautiful jar mm-hmm. and a nice label. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, it's made by Casey Fenner. Mm-hmm. And that's just it. But but nobody knows the real sweat and blood and sometimes no. tears. No, oh that, some t- there will be tears. tears. That really goes into tears. the product <laughs> yeah. and goes into you making this and yeah. finding that you know, level of encouragement and oh, self motivation is, is really hard. It is hard and you have to dig deep for it sometimes. Because, like, those high days, you're on the roll, you're working from from the moment you wake up to the t- till you go to sleep and you feel like you're so productive today. And then the next day, you're just like, why? <laughs> is this working out? Is it worth it? Is it really you're worth questioning it? everything and I'm, you just have to be like, dial back. But these are normal thoughts, mm-hmm. you know? I am a human being. Correct. I doubt myself sometimes. Of course. And, you know, I... This is a leap of faith. So, Fen Made, okay. Casey's Boss Beauties, Casey, the brand herself too, all are work in progress. And I accept that, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's with my YouTube, whether it's <laughs> with my content, building more engagement with my followers and all that stuff. Those all have a part to play. Okay. And social media has evolved so much to a point where it gets kind of chaotic it does it does it, it does become a little bit chaotic. a disaster sometimes yeah it does and you have to just kind of just you know what no social media today right no no you have to take those moments i, I don't i don't want to deal with this mm. i need to detox for a quick second mm. i need to just go to the beach relax mm. maybe even read a book oh goodness Some, whatever makes you happy just dial back because social media is getting right. really crazy it is. and everybody at me i know they're bored bored <laughs> bored everybody try on there trying to start something let me tell you now the devil fan work for either <laughs> hands and this has truly shown that but i'm grateful because mm. at the end of the day i have breath mm. i have food and I have people that love me. I'm surrounded by. So I, how can I complain? Complain, you right. know? Yeah. How can I complain? So, mm. Traveling, because mm. we see we see the posts, uh, we see the <laughs> we see the trips, yeah. we see the, the the Dubai trips. Mm. <laughs> Talk to us about traveling. No, when did that traveling, become a thing for you? When I could afford it. Mm. Um, <laughs> keeping it real. <laughs> Good um, when I could afford it, because I love to travel. Mm-hmm. I've always yearned to travel. My heart was just like always in every destination. I'm just like you know. When I was in high school, I made a commitment to myself that I'm going to visit every country in this world. I think there's 169 countries, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I've said I'm going to make it to every single one of them. What's the count like right now? Right now, I've been to 33. That's not bad. It's not bad. Um, <laughs> slow down this year. I was mm-hmm. hoping to take two more off this year. But we're going to shift that and hopefully get to it some point. 
but traveling boy when i tell you that it brings a whole (coughs) excuse me it brings a whole new perspective your whole outlook on life itself it's so beautiful Mm -hmm. when you're able to to experience different cultures no sorry oh no i'm good okay I cleared my throat, man. We're all right. But when you're <laughs> able to back. experience... <laughs> <A joke. laughs> no, we're corona free around here. But um, experiencing different cultures and just seeing different persons and how their day-to-days are, it's mm-hmm. so beautiful. Like, it's so different. So I lived in South Africa briefly for about four months. Because, yeah, that's when you were doing the modeling. Right, right. Mm-hmm. right. I just got signed and I moved over there and... That was the biggest leap of faith I've ever taken. Mm-hmm. I went over there knowing not one person <laughs> at all. And, um, family not, members? No family members, no friends, no nobody close. You nobody. just take up yourself and say you're going to move from Jamaica. I spoke to my parents because I actually wanted to do psychology. Mm-hmm. That's what I always wanted to do in university. And then I had a conversation with my dad and he was like, no, better you take up something that you know would be... Um, more sufficient, you know, when you get a degree, you can get a job. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't trying to calm me down or um, discourage you. Yeah, discourage me. He really wasn't. He was just trying to be logical. Logical, which is... Which is always my dad. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand what he did there, but I then started something that was just like... I kind of just went through the book and I said, I I guess this, which was (laughs) international relations, and I did not enjoy it at all, Uh, mm -hmm. which proved through the results of it. (laughs) So I... (laughs) I'm not I'm not your typical student. Mm-hmm. So I went to them and I said, you know, boy, mom, dad, listen. I don't want to waste your money any longer. And I promise I'm not doing it purposely. It really is just not a right fit. And I'm hoping that you guys can, you know, support me on my decision here. Mm-hmm. I had a job in marketing. So I was just like, I'll use this as my way for right now. And when I figure out what I want to do, yeah. then I'll go there. Mm-hmm. But in that time, I got offered something by agency in South Africa. Okay. And I was just like... This is an opportunity. So after, so wait, so did you stop university? Stopped university. Right. Had a job in marketing. Correct. Um, left that and left went. that and went to South Africa. Okay. Cape Town, South Africa. So while over there, uh, my ticket was only for four months because that was the longest time you're allowed to be in that country as an international visitor. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm gonna do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. Hus- my mom hustled that money to make sure that I could go over there. Well, obviously, they were in support of the decision. I mean, but it was What was tough. the conversation like? Yeah, the conversation, what was the conversation? I'm sh- they were disappointed. You know, we have to keep it real. You mm-hmm. go to school to ensure that you get a degree. Neither of my parents had degrees. So it was kind of like looking. It was heavy on me. I'm right. the eldest. Mm-hmm. So there, it was a pretty tough moment for me because I had to be honest. Because if I was not going to be honest with myself, I'm just going to be disrespecting myself. Right. That conversation, it, there was no blow up. You could sense the disappointment, but you could sense the support. At support the same at the same time. time. Right, mm-hmm. at the same time. So I was grateful for that. So we hustled up, got ready to go to South Africa, mm-hmm. went by myself. It was my first time taking a flight for over, <laughs> for that long. long. I, it was kind of scary. 12 mm-hmm. hours just on a by plane. Yourself? By myself. Not outside. to a family member or a friend. <laughs> scary. Scary stuff. But I got over there and I'm grateful to have met some Jamaicans over there. That's cool. Yeah. Right. So that was great. Yeah, the link up. Yeah, oh gosh. So that is what really opened the whole travel love for me. I mm-hmm. was like, oh, wow. I love this. Cape Town remains to this day the only, only destination I would ever reside in. Oh, wow. So Jamaica has always been it, will always be it for me. This is my land. This is my love. Hence me going for the Miss Jamaica crown because I do believe in my country and my people and I've always wanted to represent them in some way. Way. Mm -hmm. Right? So um, being over in Cape Town, I was like, no. Somebody can compete with Jamaica. Jamaica. <laughs> it's not, this is not feel right. This, this is not, not look right. right. No. The food, the people, the culture, it's so similar and it was just so fascinating and familiar Mm -hmm. and you know we love familiarity it felt like home it felt like home Mm -hmm. it felt like home not saying we never struggled with it you know but it felt like home so one of your fun memories what's the point of your fun memory in cape town cape town one of my fun memories i went cage diving with great white sharks like you're crazy (laughs) (laughs) you're crazy (laughs) that's what you are <laughs> Luckily, there were no great whites that day, but the sharks came up and everything. Mm, Funny yeah. enough, the day I had a panic attack as soon as it got in the cage because I don't know what I thought I was walking into, mm-hmm. 
but you get in the cage it's as slender you guys can have a this table right here but it's as the slender as this table mm -hmm. but as long as it and it's just to the side of the boat oh, i got Jesus. in and i felt cramped and i was like get take me out and they're like what she said what did she oh say oh my she, god said, take me out of this right now um so i had a moment so you come this far and you're not going to do this get back in there so i got back in there because they're just like if you don't usually it's only the first batch that gets any shark interaction i was mm -hmm. like boy you oh, just gonna Jesus. have to tough it out you're going to be the first batch so i got back in there but when i got back in there i was at the end now before mm -hmm. i was in the middle <laughs> when the shark come up and start boom 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 beside Jesus. me all of us focus is on keep your fingers keep your toes in keep your fingers oh keep your toes in oh my god you so, are a little daredevil I you are am. crazy I love, I'm, I'm an adrenaline junkie so i love that stuff i have the only thing i've done that's really crazy i swam with sharks before mm. i mean that's not bad but i mean it wasn't really too scary for me to mm -hmm. be honest but then the only thing that really got me like anxiety attack was like jumping off a cliff Whoa. I've done cliff diving before. What? And you it. call me crazy? <laughs> and I did it before the first time. I, I shouldn't even say this, but it's under the influence. Mm. That, do, I do not recommend this in any way because that is not safe to jump under the influence. No, man. You're but brave. afterwards, I've done a lot of cliff diving and I've done scuba diving. I love to dive. I'm a really good scuba diver. I would diver. really love to scuba dive. I've never scuba dived before. We should take a trip to the grill mm, and I'll bring you on to I'm some ready. good scuba divers down there. I love that. You would enjoy that. Trust I me. I love that. But yeah, traveling, whole new. Uh, it's something I recommend to any and everybody, everybody. Mm -hmm. like if you feel lost if you're able to just travel to uh, somewhere unknown no, mm -hmm. give yourself a week i guarantee you would come back feeling refreshed renewed and just different culture mm. different people experience Man. food it's i don't know what it is but when we travel across the waters we are a bit more tolerant and opening open open oh, right yeah we're able yep. to, be, to to say we're going to try this we're going to do that we're going to do that we're going to do that but when you come back home, you're a little bit more reserved. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain things that you say you're not going to know because it's home, home. and it's always going to be available. Correct. When you travel, you try to maximize that experience by doing as much as, much you, as can. you can. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. traveling opens a mind, as I say, it's mm. open to a lot mind, of... body, and soul. Yeah, a lot of different things that mm -hmm. you mind. You know, you're more open-minded, I mm -hmm. guess that's the word. You're just more open-minded to a lot more topics and a lot right. more situations. Because Jamaica, we love, we love Yad. Yes. But they, they, they kind of boxed into a lot of things. Right. And we, we stuck in some of the traditional ways, ways yeah. which is kind of sad, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But when you kind of explore and see different people and meet different see different culture it's right. just such a beautiful thing it is a beautiful thing it is and i love it yeah. i would love to travel even more if you can even travel to one place one just do it you don't even have to be far off or whatever just try it just, just try it. it yeah yeah i agreed but it was an absolute pleasure having yes, you here yes thank you so much for having me here i'm so grateful that we got to touch base with the all these things you know all the persons as you say know me just as i was yeah. miss jamaica yeah and i have been trying to escape not escape that because not necessarily run away from it because it is a part of who i am but it's not only who i am yeah so fan made you know if anybody's ever interested you can get it at cpj market in kingston mm -hmm. butcher's Bark in kingston you can also get it at l m meats supermarket in runaway bay yeah. okay um and there is two more locations coming up soon i'm locking it in and hopefully they will be mobi all so, of those i'll leave them in the description below yeah man no problem and so, so I'll send they can them to you. find out of course definitely but thank you so much and it was a pleasure all the best on this journey thank you yeah. i'm nervous as you should be i am nervous whatever you want to do you should scare you <laughs> but, uh, but i'm ready appreciate you you know, I, I, creating this space so that I could share of, that. Absolutely. You are such a star. <laughs> Thank you. Honestly. <laughs> so before we have to do this the hue and stereo way, mm -hmm. right? We're going to close off with our affirmation. Right. And we're going to say it. So the secret of getting ahead is getting started. It is all these little steps that make the journey complete. Do you believe that? Absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I'm pretty sure I shared that. Yeah, I you did. That. You did. You did. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ian. This was a pleasure. You too. Yeah. I yeah I'll be listening. I can't wait for the rest of, of the episodes. Of course. I mean, I go and come in the kitchen. I yes. Need to, need to stop by the kitchen. You need to teach me. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. I cannot cook if we remember clearly. <laughs> and you teach me a few tricks yeah, man. in the kitchen. Yeah, man. We'll get there. That good. sounds good. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe wherever you stream podcasts. Tune in. Same place, same time, right here on the Hewins Theory Podcast.